Hey everyone, welcome to another Plotty Time mini So This week, again, just me, Papa Scotch, and guess what? We're going to do something a little bit different now. I have been doing mini sods where I talked about certain kind of uh, trophies, n- platinums I got. Uh, these are the Num Skull entries, the Num Dick Chronicles. Everybody loves them. You guys know them. Everybody loves them. But those are games where I decided to play them because I figured I never would have played them normally. Once I play them, I just talk about the game and the platinum, how easy, how shitty the game is, so on and so forth, whatever. That's been fun. So I try. I, I wanted to do something a little bit different. My original thought was to review, look at, revisit previous platinum trophies I've gotten in the past, and that's what we're going to do today. But originally, I thought I'd just read through the trophy list, be like, I remember this, I remember this, I remember this. Not the case. I try, This is the second time I'm trying to record this episode, because I tried to freewheel it like that for this game I'm going to be talking about, and it ended up being me reading trophy lists and being like, I don't remember that. I don't remember any of this. I don't remember that. It was very, very boring. And I'm not going to do that to you folks because you were nice enough to listen. So in order to pick a game for this week and for all future plat dissection entries, which is what I'm tentatively calling it right now, that may change. I don't know. I don't know. Currently, I have 156 platinum trophies. Uh, what I did was I just got a random number generator online that would pick a number between 1 and 156. Whatever number platinum that was in the timeline is the one game that I would talk about. So this week, I forget the number exactly what it picked, I don't remember, but it's Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect 3 is an interesting choice because we did Mass Effect 1 so far, the first entry of the series. Uh, we mentioned in that episode, we haven't recorded Mass Effect 2 yet. We will. I'm sure we'll get to it someday. We ha- uh, Mass Effect 2 was one of the best games of that generation. I still love it to this day. I would play it again right now. When the Mass Effect trilogy re-releases, I might pick it up just to play Mass Effect 2 again. Honestly, that's how good it was. And we're going to get to a lot of that in the episode if you want to listen to what we talked about, about Mass Effect, the original one, the first one, the OG one we talked about as a group, go check out that episode, because it's a good one. We did have to, you know, strip away a lot of the story, because it's a very large game, but it is what it is. Now, for what I'm going to do for Mass Effect 3 is briefly tell the story as I remember it, or possibly I also read some Wikipedia entries, but I still don't quite really... T- what, what I find interesting is that I know exactly what happened... In Mass Effect 2, and I tell you exactly what happened beat by beat. Mass Effect 3, is, well, I had to do some reading because I didn't remember much of it at all. Apparently, the Reapers are still trying to attack Earth. I'm not going to spoil it, too. I'm not going to go too depth into the story. I'm going to mention the controversy involving it, but that only for a minute there. I, I want to talk about the memories mostly I have of getting this Platinum. That's kind of going to be what this is all about. The story is the Reapers are going to attack Earth. They have attacked Earth. And the the main driving force is that the universe is kind of kind of scared. We're in the Milky Way, not the universe, the Milky Way galaxy is where this takes place in 2186. So about six months after Mass Effect 2 that I read. It is basically Shepard and the gang and going around reuniting all the races to the point where all the alien races to the point where they can combine and fight together to try and kill the reapers uh for those of you that don't remember the reapers are an ancient old world who knows how long they've been around civilization and what they do every fifty thousand years is they come back and then they just eradicate all organic life in the milky way because They had, at this time, reached their peak, and then they leave, I guess, for, I don't know, however long it takes evolution to continue again, a couple million, hundred million years, a couple hundred million years, wait for life to happen, and then they'll come and destroy, I don't, see, the 50,000 years thing is suspicious, because the the people in the game, the, the previous race or group of people this happened to was the Protheans. And they are there are relics of them. People know they existed, but they actually know very little about them. They even didn't know that they were killed by Reapers way back in the day. Anywho, a lot of ho- holes in that plot. And that's not even probably something we all thought about when we were so mad at this game, which I'll get to in a sec. Now, looking back at the story, reading over it, there were definitely certain beats 
that I remembered. The the uh, one of the big ones, and I, again, I'm not going to spoil it because we're gonna talk about it. But there was a very crucial mission with Morden the Solarian regarding the Genophage, which is what we talked about in Mass Effect One. It's the thing that makes the Krogan all sterile, so they can't reproduce. Uh, that and uh, that beat, that moment, that scene, that mission with Morden the Solarian was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, it it was presented perfectly. It was a it was a difficult story moment, and they pulled it off absolutely one hundred percent beautifully. I I couldn't have been more happy about that, and that so it's so difficult to talk about because the that was such a beautiful moment, and it really carried a lot of this story as well. That was the one mission reading about this over where I absolutely remember it. The only other part of the thing I really mission I, I really remember the only mission is that the quarry quarians quarians, which Tally is one of, she that their race basically created the Geth. Some shit went down. The Geth took over the planet, so the quarians don't even have a home world anymore. I don't remember how long ago that happened. There's a lot of lore here, and I'm and I'm paraphrasing. I'm I'm going over it slowly, but. The mission is to help the Quarians retake their homeworld. This, uh, I, I remember that being a very important structure, but at reading the rest of the story, that's barely any of it, and I don't remember any of the other shit. Uh, there was a very big controversy with this game where the ending was terrible. I honestly don't remember what the ending is. I'm actually going to go read about it right now. Magic of editing. In the back. See, for you, that was just like a second. But for me, I did a whole bunch of, uh, of reading. And by a bunch of reading, I was probably gone maybe just a couple minutes. But anyway, so there's three options uh, when you activate the Crucible at the end of the game. I'm not going to go over them again. But the fact of the matter is that everyone was pretty mad about this ending because a lot of the decisions you made in this game or previous games, didn't really matter. Uh, e one way or another, the Reapers are getting here, and they're already here. And the various options... I don't want to read over them because we're going to go over it, but they're not good. It's bad. Then uh, I do remember there was a whole bunch of controversy about this. People were really upset because Mass Effect 2 was so good and 3's ending was trash. Most of the other parts of 3 were good. People liked it. It was another third person cover base shooter it played really well the class all the classes you could play as were fun you could grab your your teammates and go and and, and fuck some stuff up and that was all fun it was fun but the ending had so little emotional resonance and weight and I, I remember I don't remember specifically who it was but I remember doing the ending and going through the final schematic and and seeing like some of the main characters, like some of your team die, and there was literally nothing you could do to uh, save that person. I did remember also uh, there was like kind of a fast forward moment in the at the end of the game where they'd go later in you know what happened later on, and there'd be characters there that definitely should have died, but no one explained how they left. The point I'm getting at is so many people bitch to complain that they put out a DLC that fixed the ending way later after the game was released. Uh, a lot of I remember playing the new ending and it had been so long that I don't even remember what was added. There was like a couple plot hole filler scenes, but people were still like this is not good. This is way too little, way too late. So that's basically the uh, top to bottom of the story. We're not really in, in as little, but as much detail as I remember or could talk about because I don't want to ruin it. So what about the trophies? If I'm looking at this list again, it appears that uh, I, I can't exactly tell how long it took me. I don't know how many hours it did uh, because that hour data is actually only on like PS4 movies and uh, further up. So I, I don't know how long it took me to get through this. But what I can say for sure is that out of the 69 trophies, I have 57 of them. 
The only reason I have any of the DLC completed was because I got the special edition super duper pre-order version. I think it was like 90 bucks at the time. Uh, but I probably, it was 2012, so I probably shouldn't have spent that money on that. That was probably a bad financial decision. But there's two DLC trophy packs, one called From Ashes, which are, it's uh, called Freedom Fighter, Find All Required Intel to Help Eden Prime's Colonists, which is, I thought Eden Prime, oh, that's right, that was from Mass Effect 1. Anyway, Prothean Expert, learn more about the Prothean Expert. Uh, there's also another DLC trophy pack called Leviathan, which gave you a couple extra missions. I don't specifically remember e playing either of these or the specifics of either of these because they were essentially missions that unlocked once I hit a certain area in the story. And you could just go to them and do them whenever. So I just did them as side missions and honestly forgot that they were any kind of different from a story or a side mission. I had no idea. I looked through the trophy list. Like I said, I tried to record this and it didn't come out great because it was so boring. I was just talking about the trophies that I earned and I don't remember any of them. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. I'm looking at the story ones. They're not super detailed. There's not a whole lot in there of them talking about them. So I honestly don't remember specifically what any of these ones are for. Going through the regular, the rest of the list, so uh, you get uh, one, a trophy. Like so There's a couple like little stupid trophies you get really quick. This one's Shopaholic, where you visit a store. Obviously, in the game, you're going to visit a store. You're going to visit a store at the Citadel, a bunch of other places to buy shit you need. That's an easy one. It's just a cute little moment. Uh, I do remember from this recording those ads. I think it was that one, or was it two? Who cares? Uh, you get pretty like other easy trophies. Modify a weapon. You're going to do that a billion times. Uh, the difficult one here that everyone was talking about is finish the game on insanity. With, uh, and I don't remember that being too terribly difficult. It was probably you know a couple places where you die, but it'd be my second playthrough, so I didn't think anything of it. Uh, Paramore, a trophy for having a love, love a romantic relationship either creating a new one or establishing one. And I do remember I romanced Jack. She's a badass. I had a whole bunch of tattoos. Was that this or two? Damn, I don't even remember. Might have been this one or two. I don't remember. See, I told you. This is what we're going to be doing. Talking about me not remembering. There's uh, killing a bunch of enemies. Uh, and then, this is a very interesting thing. Because... When I was reading through the trophy list, I got to a point where it said multiplayer only for the trophy, and I had completely forgot that this game had multiplayer. This was a very dark time in video game history where any game that was a third person shooter or a first person shooter, they shoved multi, they just fucking jammed multiplayer in there. Uh, these are games that shouldn't have had one. Uncharted, I'm looking at you. There's no reason for you to have a multiplayer. You know who else I'm looking at? While we're looking at people like this, The Last of Us, we didn't need a fucking multiplayer. Although I think that was like 2013? Oh shit, 2014? Yeah, it would have been right around here. But anyway, the point is, they had a multiplayer in this. And the only thing, when I, when I heard that, and I, I recalled back, tried to think about it, I don't remember anything about multiplayer except the fact that I remember hating it. I remember it not being that good. I remember just getting through the trophies. I I was so bored. So bored. Uh, it's very interesting, too, because I'm, I'm reading over it again. Maybe it was something else I did. But there, you could either reach level 15 in multiplayer or level 50 in single player. Reach 20 in multiplayer or level 16 in single player. I guarantee you I made those single player. I probably just kept doing all the... It looks like the fit, the 60 in single player was the same day or close to when I did the Insanity run. So there's probably a new game plus and I probably just rode that character all the way through. But yeah, I, there's also all single player missions on Insanity or all multiplayer maps on Gold. So there's definitely some uh, here that uh, you could do in either multiplayer or single player. So now that I'm rethinking about it, uh, I think that's pretty cool. I like that idea where it could be one of two things. Uh, it, I like that better than it being multiple trophies because if you're going to shoehorn in multiplayer, I really appreciate the fact that you're not going to make me play it. That shows that you really believe in your multiplayer and how great it is. <sighs> Which was, this was such a weird time because every game had to have multiplayer. It wouldn't ship without it. Singularity had fucking multiplayer. One was like the monsters 
and one was the the sh- the regular dudes with guns. I do remember that being kind of fun, but by the time I got to that multiplayer, eh, it was way too late. Anyway, who cares about singularity multiplayer? The point is, shoehorned in multiplayer. Uh, appreciate you not making me play multiplayer. And maybe I jumped in and played like a couple games or I had to do like 10 maps or I forget why. But I do remember playing multiplayer and hating it. Uh, it was interesting because this this game, this game this time had multiplayer jammed in everything, but they didn't have any microtransactions or they had very little microtransactions. I remember the first game people getting fired up about having it. I mean, there were tons. There have been microtransactions for a long time. But the one I really remember was Dead Space 3 because it gave you a mad unfair advantage in the story. <laughs> and uh god damn i wish we had more dead space game i'm getting on a on a tangent here but that's that's about it that's that's what i remember from mass effect 3 i remember enjoying the story i remember getting through like three quarters ish of it and then saying "Ooh, this is not being mad, not being like, "Ooh, this is going over the rails. I better fix it." But I remember saying, "Like, mm, how is like?" It didn't feel like it was going to be a satisfying conclusion, you know. So I'd be like, mm, "I don't know. I don't know how they're going to pull all this together." But let's see. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. They made Mass Effect two, and that was amazing. So I'm sure three will all come together. And then the ending happened, and it was just a wet fart. It was just bad. Uh, mostly, like I said, because the endings of the game were all determined by only a handful of objectives. Like, not not much of what I did previously mattered. And that really bothered people, because it was like, well, what the fuck? This is all supposed to come to something. Everything in Mass Effect 2 that you did in one way or another changed the ending for you. So that's what people were expecting, and it was like a massive step backwards in that kind of storytelling probably if i had to guess it's because they wanted to push this game out as fast as possible because let's let's not forget that all three mass effect games came out in that playstation 3 xbox 360 generation the only one that came out for four was andromeda and that was so poorly received it's actually a meme now so uh there was recently a new mass effect game a couple months ago they they announced it was going to happen at the video game awards and yeah, sure. Let's. I. This is a great property. They have a rich and storied lore. They have a whole shitload of fans everywhere. And yeah, I mean, I'll. I'm. I'll definitely take a look at whatever else comes out of the Mass Effect universe. You're gonna have to fix the shit out of uh, whatever it is. And I don't want to see Shepard or that gang in there. We're done with them. We seen their trilogy. We saw how it ends. Also, there you go. There's another thing. Cause there is a canon ending. I don't know which of the endings of Mass Effect, 3, Mass Effect 3 are canon, and I'm not going to go into it, but I don't understand how you would continue with this story. Like, once Mass Effect 3 is done, the the universe as we know it is completely changed, no matter what option you pick. So how are we just going to go back to some kind of regular-ass story in this universe? They're going to have to do a prequel. Like, they'll, they'll have to. That's my guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm talking out of my ass at this point, because I just spent 20 minutes talking about it a game I barely remember platinuming. Uh, but yeah, like I said, mostly I remember the ending controversy. I be, remember being disappointed in the story in a genre that so heavily relied on story. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's mostly what I have to say about it. Uh, I'd, I'd ta- definitely take a look at a new game. I never even touched Andromeda because... Uh, I actually have a friend who is an insane Mass Effect fan, and they got like 25% through it, and they said, don't bother. So that's definitely, I was on the fence anyway, and then they came and, and said that. So I was like, no, thanks. You know, I'm good. I don't I don't need to to do that. There's too many games out now. You know, I, I'm not going to get onto it and sound like an old man. I'll tell you what. What I will do is I'll say, uh, if you have any other kind of ideas, thoughts, feelings about Mass Effect... And you want to send them our way, maybe some fanfic with Chomp Slap, I don't know. Send those emails to plottytime at gmail.com. We have a hundred percent response rate. We'll absolutely listen to listen. We'll absolutely read whatever emails you send. Wanna to get to us faster on the socials where Dr. Scientist lives at Plotty Time on Instagram and Twitter. If you wanna watch our logo while you listen, 
go to YouTube, find us Plotty Time, like and subscribe. That really helps us out. So that's it for now. Maybe we'll do this again. Maybe not. I don't know. Talk to you later. Peace.